Hello everybody, this is Dee from Dee's Cute and Crafty and I am back with another video and today is my first fall video of the season. You see me just getting myself organized. Everything came from Dollar Tree except one or two things from Joann's. So let's get into this video. I have the burlap leaves. I have some Chanel stems, various ribbons. I have deco mesh from Dollar Tree and Joann's. The brown came from Joann's. I have the mesh tubing. I have one of the Dollar Tree home signs with the little fall accent in the back. And I have some pumpkins. And we're going to see how this door swag goes. I'm going to be using a yard stake from Dollar Tree as well. So I'm just cutting off the top of the sign. I did that ahead of time just to see how it would come off, if it would break up or if it would be okay. And it did start to crack, but that's okay. I don't want that part. I just want the word. So here you see me carefully trying to cut that back piece with that pretty pumpkin, trying to get that piece off so I can use in my door swag. And I just had to take my time and just wedge it and push and trim and all the things you have to do to get that out of there. The paper started to tear, so I'll have to go in and do some repair work on that. But all in all, it was usable. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the sign or the word from the frame. Looking back at it, I probably could have painted the word white. It would have probably popped a little more, but we're just going to use it. And then I trimmed around the pumpkin all of the deco mesh or not deco mesh the mdf that wasn't covered with that print some of it was just brown um so i cut that off just hot gluing the home word down to the pumpkin cleaning up getting that glue off of there and here's the yard stake i was talking about we're going to take those uh, words off of their home sweet home set it to the side because we will use one of those in the next DIY or in another DIY for this video so we're just taking all that off because I want this yard stake it's got some heavy-duty staples in there that I can't get out so I'm just gonna pound them down with my hammer usually when you make a door swag it's made with a yard stick I didn't have one so as always I'm making do I'm using what I have so I'm taking my Chanel stems and I'm gonna just come down a little bit so that I have room left at the top for my pumpkin and my bow. I'm going to twist two at the top, one facing left, one facing right. Measure down three inches, put one Chanel stem, and I'm going to twist it together, and it is going to face straight up towards the ceiling. Three inches, two, three inches, one, three inches, two, three inches, one. That will be the pattern. And then because I don't want them to move, I'm going to hot glue them to the back or on the back and secure them with just some ribbon scraps that I have just to keep them in place. So here you see all my uh, ribbon and deco mesh has been cut. My ribbon has been cut in six inches and my deco mesh has been cut in 10 inches. I did not even um, count how many strips of ribbon that I got. It was a nine foot roll. So I just cut the roll up in its entirety until there was no more left. And then I dovetail all the ends of my ribbon. The deco mesh, um, I use the entire roll from Dollar Tree because there's not that much on it. And then on the um, deco mesh from Joann's, I think I cut probably, I'm going to say 12 to 15 strips. However many Chanel stems you have on your swag is how is however many pieces of ribbon and deco mesh you're going to need. That came out so weird. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just going to make a cruffle. I'm going to roll my raw ends in, and then I'm just going to walk my fingers down that deco mesh, and it gives you this little cute bow. Let's do one more. Roll the rough edges in. Use a um, clothespin to hold it, and then just walk your fingers up. And you get that little ruffle, cruffle kind of thing. I think it's called a woodland ruffle or something like that. I don't know. It's just cute. So you're going to attach them all down. And then I went ahead and did the same thing with my green deco mesh and put that down. You're just going to put it down and twist one or two times and leave your, you know, Chanel stems up so that you can use them again. So you don't have to find them, kind of pull them up so you can see them. And now I'm just putting in all of my ribbon. 
I love this truck ribbon, the green truck with the pumpkin, so cute. And I'm adding in some of the mesh tubing with that ribbon and a leaf, just bunching it all together, just pulling it out the way I want it, however pattern I want the ribbon to go. It can go any way you want it. And then add a leaf, pinch it together, and just secure it in. And then cut it off. And anywhere where the black um, Chanel stems show, I hit a dab of glue and cover it with some of the ribbon because I didn't have any other color Chanel stem to use. So I just wired this down to the swag, hot glued my pumpkin at the top, popped on this Dollar Tree bow that matches perfectly. I normally make my own, but this one was perfect. It was in my stash, didn't even know I had it. And it's already got the mesh tubing on it, excellent for this DIY. So I was happy about that. But this one, I'm not in love with it. I like it. It gives me all the fall vibes, all the fall feels, but I think it's a little busy. I don't know. You guys comment down below. Let me know what you think about it. And let me know, as always, which one is your favorite, because this one is not my favorite. <laughs> so here it is, you guys. It is tall. It, it's long. I didn't measure how long it is, but it's pretty good size. Again, it gives me all the fall feels. It does. But I, I feel like it's busy. Maybe I should have just chosen one pattern ribbon and then left the other two colors solid. I don't know. Moving on to DIY number two. Here's that sign I talked to you about. And we've got some jute. I've got out my pencil. So you know we're going to do some hand lettering. I have some MDF board. And we're going to flip it over. Because look what we're doing. We're doing gnomes today, you guys. We're going to do some hand-drawn gnomes. I drew at least five of them already. I'm just going to go through now and show you how I did that. Also, I have some of these little foam scatter beads and I just cut them in half and set them on a piece of masking tape and we're going to paint those gray. So they're just sitting to the side. I have all my paint colors out, you guys, all the fall colors because we're going to be painting these gnomes. So here I am just drawing one by hand. I didn't want to draw all six of them by hand. So I'm just showing you how I did one of them and I tried to make them all different because we're going to be using them again for this DIY we're just going to use one but we're going to use the other ones in another DIY in this video so thank you to everybody who stopped by today to watch this video you guys know I love and appreciate each and every one of you if you're new here please consider subscribing hit that notification bell so you never miss out never miss out on another cute and crafty DIY with D. And if you've been here before, I thank you so much for coming back. So now that I've got all my gnomes cut out, I have started painting them. So I went in with my Waverly chalk paint in the color white and I painted their beards. I did a little bit of um, detail and shadowing. Some of them have gray in them. Some of them have a little bit of brown in them. Just, you know, you could be so creative on this part. And that's what I love. I love the creativity that crafting gives you. You can make everything your own. Whatever you want to do, the sky's the limit. You are only limited by your imagination. So I love this. So each one is different. And I'm going in with um, my sage paint by hello hobby and i'm painting this one green and i'm trying to outline their arms and all the things like that so that you can tell they have arms so now that they're all painted they're so cute i love these guys i'm just adding a little white pom-pom to the top of each of their hats so we're only using one for this diy so we need to choose which one we're going to use Here's that home sign. 
that I told you to say from the previous DIY. So I just flipped it over. I distressed it a little bit. And I wrote on there, there's no place like gnome. I'm going to go back in with my Sharpie. Make everything nice and crisp so you can read it. So now I'm going to go back in with some more of my Waverly White chalk paint and I'm going to dry brush this even on the lettering. I'm going to dry brush the whole thing and then I'm going to sand it a little bit more. So I decided to use the first one that I painted and I am also using some more of those burlap leaves because you get five in a pack and I think I had like four packs. I had the brown, the orange, the neutral and the green. So I have a lot of leaves left but they're going to be getting used in another DIY in this video today. So I'm just going to thread a couple of beads onto the leaf and you guys I'm putting my leaves on backwards. Yep, I certainly am. <laughs> I was so excited about getting this project together. I did not pay attention to what I was doing. So yeah, I glued them on backwards. When you flip it over, you'll see the seam. I left it. It's okay. When you guys do yours, if you recreate this, just pay attention to which way your leaves are going. So then I threaded some jute. Um, onto the back of the gnome and added some beads to him as well. He looks like he's flying because he's sitting crooked, but that's okay. He's still cute. So here he is. This one came together so quick and easy because we already had the gnomes already done. Um, I just added my little half, I don't know, bead scatter. It's styrofoam. And I just added those to each corner. And that was it. I put a jute hanger on the back. And he was done. Moving on to DIY number three. We have our gnomes that we painted. We've got some of the pumpkins from Dollar Tree. Um, some wood beads. We're still using the leaves from Dollar Tree. And some jute cord. So we're going to start out by getting our pumpkins together. We're making a garland, you guys. I, I have to do it. This is going to be a gnome and pumpkin leaf garland it is so adorable not my favorite though if you want to know which one my favorite is you're gonna to have to keep watching so after pulling those apart and taking those little clips off I went in with my orange sharpie and I just uh, colored over any part of the foam that I could see because we don't want that white foam showing so we just covered that up I'm flipping these back over pulling out the little stems and I'm going to tuck in a little piece of jute so that I have something to hang these pumpkins on this garland with. Then I'm adding a dab of glue and pressing the stem right back in. There we go. Let's do one more. Yeah, I was having technical difficulties with this glue gun. I was getting so upset. This glue gun is brand new, and it was giving me trouble. It jammed up, and I had to fix it. So we're good. We're back in business. <laughs> so after I got all of my pumpkins done, I started in on the leaves, and we'll see that in just a second. Since the leaves are already wired, I'm just going to take that wire, fold it over, and make a loop, and then just twist it around the stem. 
when I did that, though, because these are Dollar Tree, I realized how flimsy they actually were in the back. That stem had started to pull up. So I just added a piece of burlap, scrap burlap that I had uh, laying around. Just a little bit of glue, though, because if you put too much, it's going to show through. So now that I've got all my leaves looped over and all of my pumpkins looped over, for lack of a better way to put it, I'm going to start stringing this. I had them laid out so I could see what kind of pattern I wanted to do. You guys put these on any way you want. This is so adorable. Oh my goodness. I think I might like this one better than the gingerbread and the um, candy canes. You guys let me know which one was your favorite between the two garlands I've done. This one is so cute. And you guys still, as adorable as it is, it's not my favorite. Gorgeous, but not my favorite. So I'm just stringing beads and leaves. And at first I thought, well, I guess I can glue these loops to this burlap or to the burlap, to the jute. I'm just going to glue everything and, and it'll be fine. I did not like that. So I pulled it apart. Anything that I had already glued on, like the pumpkin and the leaf, I took it off and I tied it on. That made more sense to me. So you'll see me here tying this pumpkin on. And before I tighten it, I go ahead and stretch it out and make sure that it's the placement that I want. And then I tighten that knot. And that was way better than trying to glue it on. Now, the gnomes are glued on, just like I glued on the gingerbread man and woman when I made that one. I just run a bead of glue along the back and lay that jute twine in that glue and cover it with a piece of ribbon. And that works out really good. I love this yellow and brown one. That gnome, oh, he is so cute. Could you not just see this, and we may revisit it, as a spring or summer DIY with all of your gnomes being this one in the yellow and brown with some little bumblebees and some sunflowers on a garland? That would be so cute. So here it is, all finished. I really just like this one. I, you, But you guys are going to be like, you like it so much, but it's not your favorite. It's not. But the last one is, the fourth DIY that I have for you today is my favorite. This gets an honorable mention. We'll do that. It's my second favorite. Yeah, I got thumbtacks all in my wall. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> this room is getting all repainted at some point, so it doesn't bother me. I have to display my things somewhere. And this is where I have the most space. This is such a cute garland. Can't say it enough. It has so many possibilities. DIY number four, doing some hand lettering. I have Waverly chalk paint in white and also in agave and cashew. Hello Hobby in blush and sage. I've got some polyfill I'm not going to use. I've got a little piece of jute, one of the wooden Dollar Tree uh, pumpkins, and also the Hello Hobby pumpkin chalk paint. Some berry garland in the fall colors and a few fall flowers. And some of this beautiful sunflower and pumpkin paper and some MDF because we're still working on those gnomes. That paper came from Hobby Lobby. So I've got my gnome all drawn, and I showed you guys in the last DIY how I draw my gnomes. This is just a bigger one. So I'm going to get him cut out of the MDF, and I'll be right back. There he is all cut out and nice and clean and ready to go. I sand it down the sides like I usually do once I cut something out because I cut it by hand. And I'm going in with my Jot um, glue stick so I can get this beautiful studio paper glued to my gnome. So 
smoothing everything down. And I started out by trying to cut him out with my X-Acto knife, but because I was too eager, moving too fast, I did not let that glue dry, so it started to rip the paper a little bit. So then I said, okay, go in with your scissors. So I went in with my little fussy cut scissors, and I'm getting him all cut out. I should have just um, did the lighter trick and just did that but I wasn't thinking about that plus I think really truly the glue needs to be completely dry before you do that either so that probably wouldn't have worked so now that I've got it trimmed out I'm gonna go back in with my gator sander and I'm gonna smooth down the edges once I get this brim of this hat trimmed out Now I'm smoothing everything down. And I am going to start by painting this brim white. After looking at it, I thought I probably should have painted it yellow. Yellow would have been better, but that's okay. I still love it. He came out so stinking cute, and he is my favorite of the four that I am showing you today. I just love him. I hope you guys do too. And I hope you'll recreate him. So I mixed together the Hello Hobby uh, Sage. I had to think about it. It's sitting right there on the table, Denise. I mixed together the Hello Hobby Sage. And I also mixed together some of the Waverly Agave to get this color that you see me painting the body in. Now we're going to just outline his arms a little bit with some of the Waverly white chalk paint. And I didn't even clean my brush in between. I just left whatever blue paint was on it when I started dipping into, dipping into the white. And it's just given us a line of demarcation so you can tell he's got arms. I am mixing together some of that Hello Hobby blush and some of the Waverly Cashew to give him this little buff pinky colored nose. I didn't want it super pink and I didn't want it um, white because it would blend in too much with the beard. You wouldn't even know. So I had to make this color up and I love the color. Love how it turned out. I gave his beard a little bit of a gray shadowing and I went ahead and I painted my pumpkin um, mixing together, well, I didn't even mix it. I used the Hello Hobby in Pumpkin, and then I just did some brush strokes to round it out to give you those lines that a pumpkin has. I used that blush color that I made for his nose, and I just brushed some of that on there, and then I went back in with some of that blue that I mixed together and just did a little bit of shadowing in spots on the pumpkin. And then I wrote in my own handwriting and pencil first, Hello Pumpkin. And now I'm just going over it with my two favorite Sharpies. I have an ultra fine Sharpie and a regular Sharpie to give me that full calligraphy look that I love. Now I'm taking a piece of jute twine. We're just going to wrap the stem. And I'm going to make a super tiny bow out of this jute that almost didn't happen because I was just fussing with it too, way too much. But I got it. Just going to hot glue that down. And then we're going to use a few stems, little stems of that um, berry garland to put some little coils at the top of the pumpkin.
just going to wrap them around the end of my paintbrush to make them look a little springy and hot glue those down. I'm going to attach uh, one of those big Jenga blocks that I got from Dollar General. I'll pull that out of my stash and attach that to the back. It was either use one big one or two of the tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree, two of the small ones. So I just use one big one. I'm going to attach that to the back so that he stands on his own. And I was, you'll see in just a minute. Going to put his flowers on his hat. I almost forgot about his little flowers. So here, I was going to, as I was saying, I was going to add this polyfill to the tip of his hat. And I did put it on there. And then after I did, I didn't like it on there. I'm like, no, no, I don't like it. So I ripped it off. <laughs> I pulled out some of my burlap leaves um, and cut me a small piece off of there, off of the orange one and the natural colored one and made two little leaves to go on the bottom of his hat. And that was the finishing touch I needed. He is just too cute, you guys. Love him. I still think the broom of his hat should have been yellow. I'm probably going to go in and paint it yellow because it's going to drive me nuts if I don't. <laughs> but he is cute. And he's tall, too. He's about 14 inches high from the bottom all the way to the very highest point of his hat. He's 14 inches high. And here's everything, you guys, all four of the fall DIYs that I made for you today. I hope you love them as much as I do. Everything came out so pretty, and I, I'm, I'm feeling it. I have the fall fever right now. I am ready for some sweater weather, for some hot apple cider and donuts, hay rides. I'm here for it. I'm ready. Fall is just so beautiful. The colors are amazing. Again, if you guys um, are here for the first time, I thank you so much for joining me. I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on another cute and crafty DIY with me, D. And if you've been with me for a while, I thank you so much for coming back and leaving me wonderful comments. And you guys inspire me to do better, um, to be better, to make better crafts. You guys are awesome. And I'm blessed. I always tell you that, but I'm truly blessed to have you here. You guys, don't forget to check out Dee's Cute and Crafty DIY Divas on Facebook. If you have some DIYs you'd like to showcase, please go over there and ask to become a member, and Admin will let you in, and you can start showing all of your beautiful DIYs over there on Facebook to give us inspiration and so that you get inspiration back as well. I would love to have you over there. Don't forget about the giveaway. If you have not watched my last Christmas in July video, Series 7, pop on over and watch that. Follow all the rules in the description box, and you will be entered into the fall 
farmhouse, or not the fall farmhouse, the farmhouse um, 2023 calendar giveaway with a couple other goodies as well. So go over there and do that. Please um, give this video a thumbs up and comment down below. That lets YouTube know that you like my content and they'll push me out a little bit more and other people can see me as well. And that's how my channel grows. So I appreciate you guys for doing that for me. As always, please be blessed, stay safe, and craft something beautiful today, you guys. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.